amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and proteins are very important biological molecules and in the next series of lectures we're going to discuss protein chemistry but let's begin by defining what the amino acid is and discussing the structure and stereochemistry of amino acids in general so the term amino acid basically refers to a molecule that contains an amino group as well as a carboxylic acid group and the general form of the amino acid looks something like this. So every amino acid contains the carboxylic acid group and the amino group and it also contains some type of side chain that is designated by R. So R could be any type of atom or molecule. For example, the simplest type of R group is the H atom. So what defines an amino acid, what differentiates one amino acid from a second amino acid is essentially this side chain R group. Now, although there can be different isomers of the same amino acid we basically refer to an alpha amino acid when we say amino acid and that's because the alpha amino acid is the most common type of isomer of our amino acid we can also have the beta or the gamma amino acids but the alpha is the most common one so that's why we designate alpha amino acid by simply saying amino acid now what exactly is an alpha amino acid. Basically, recall that anytime we have the carbonyl group, so the carbon-oxygen double bond, the carbon right next to this carbon, so this carbon here is the alpha carbon. The next carbon across is the beta carbon, this carbon is the gamma carbon, and so forth. So basically, if the amino group is attached to our alpha carbon, that's the alpha amino acid. If it's attached to our beta position, beta carbon, that's the beta amino acid and so forth. So all the types of amino acids that our body uses, they're all alpha amino acids. And that's why when we say amino acid, we generally mean the alpha amino acid. Now, Amino acids, as I said earlier, are the building blocks or proteins and all the proteins that we use inside our body, all these proteins consist of 20 different amino acids. So no more and no less. So we have 20 different types of amino acids that we use. Now, most of the amino acids, in fact, 19 of the 20 amino acids contain a stereogenic carbon, a chiral carbon carbon and that means that all these 19 different types of uh, amino acids contain two different enantiomeric forms we have the r and the s enantiomers so let's take a following let's take a look at the following diagram so this is the central carbon on the alpha amino acid and this is the stereogenic carbon in the 19 of the 20 amino acids so one of those amino acids the glycine amino acid contains an h atom for this r group and because we already have an H atom on the carbon, having two of the same H atoms on the same carbon makes it a chiral. And so the glycine that contains the H side chain is basically an a chiral molecule. So it doesn't have any type of enantiomer. It comes in one isomer form, but all other 19 amino acids can either come in the R or the S absolute configuration, as we'll discuss in just a moment. Now, 10 of the 20 amino acids that we use in the body to make our proteins are manufactured inside our body. But the other 10 must be obtained from some type of food source to actually use in our body. And these other 10 amino acids that our body cannot manufacture are known as essential amino acids. And they're called essential because we need all 20 amino acids to actually survive and, and if we don't get any one of these 10 essential amino acids we will essentially die.
Now, 19 of the 20 amino acids are primary amines, only one is a secondary amine, and this is the proline amino acid. So this is the structure of our proline amino acid. Notice that the side chain, the R group, is basically a five-membered cyclic ring. So we have this attachment shown here. Notice the nitrogen contains one, two, carbon groups and that makes the nitrogen a secondary amine. All other amino acids contain the following structure where the N is attached to only one carbon group and so these are the primary amines. So only one of the 20 amino acids is a chiral and that's glycine and only one of the 20 amino acids is a secondary uh, amine and that's our proline. Now, let's move on to the stereochemistry of our amino acids. So we just said that all but one of the 20 amino acids are chiral and so they either have the R or S absolute configuration. But instead of actually uh, designating our stereochemistry of the amino acid using R or S notation, it's common practice to describe the stereochemistry of amino acids in the same way that that we did for carbohydrates by using the Fischer projection. So in order to actually use the Fischer projection, this is how we have to draw our amino acid. So we begin with the central carbon, the chiral carbon, so this carbon here. The up group is our carboxylic acid and the down group, the group points down, is our side chain. So for this particular case, the side chain that I use is the isopropyl. So this specific amino acid is called the valine amino acid or simply valine. Now, the difference between the stereochemistry lies in the orientation of this amino group. If the amino group points to the left, that is the L isomer. If it points to the right, that's the D isomer. And all L isomers contain the S absolute configuration. All uh, D isomer contain the R absolute configuration. So in this case, our amine group points left, so it's the L isomer of valine, it's the L valine isomer. So basically, in any Fischer projection, as we discussed in our discussion of carbohydrates, we said that the vertical lines point inward, the horizontal lines point outward, and so the Fischer projection of this amine amino acid is as shown and we can rearrange and orient our molecule in such a way so that this helps us visualize if it's the S or the R absolute configuration. So this is the nitrogen containing group. It is given the highest priority, priority number one. The H is given the first priority, uh, the last priority, priority four, and this is given the second because it contains the oxygen, and this is given the third. So notice we have to basically look towards this bond here. So we're looking this way, and we orient our circle beginning at one, going to two, and going to three. So we have this type of counterclockwise orientation and that means this is the S absolute configuration and so all L isomers of amino acids are the S absolute configuration. All R, R um, all D are the R absolute configuration. Now 18 of the 19 amino acids are all found in the S configuration in the L isomeric form. Only one is found in the D isomeric form and that is cysteine. So only one amino acid cysteine has the R configuration and so is the D isomer form. All others are found in the L form. So basically if the amino group is to the left, if it points this way, that's the L isomer. If it points to the right, that's the D isomer. Isomer. 